welcome. With each passing hour, the words of James 5 it take on added significance. The coming of the Lord is at hand. This fact is both comforting and sobering. It is reassuring to know that the day our Saviour will come for us may be near. But at the same time, we must honestly ask ourselves. Am I living in a way that will bring his commendation? Think about it. Before we continue, I have a favor to ask of you. If you have not already subscribed, please support our work by doing so, and share the video with family and friends. Thank you. The word, Maranatha, is used only once in the Bible by Paul. In his first letter to the Corinthians, Paul ended by issuing this strong statement. If anyone does not love the Lord, let him be accursed, anathema. Maranatha? Maranatha is an Aramaic word that means, our Lord has come or our Lord, come. The word became a watchword, and a password in the early church. In the midst of intense persecution, it summed up the vital hope of the church. They whispered it to each other and identified each other by it. Maranatha became the early church's mindset. The Apostle John obviously had a Maranatha mindset when he prayed. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. This was in response to Jesus' promise, yes, I am coming quickly. Revelation 22:20. 20. Every time we pray, Thy kingdom come. We are actually crying, Maranatha and asking for the return of the King of Kings. The Apostle Peter asked in 2 Peter 3:11-12. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Today, I ask, since the Lord is coming in all his glory. What manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Paul says that those who have a Maranatha mindset have a sense of urgency. And they know that it is already the hour for us to be awakened from sleep, from our spiritual slumber, from our apathy, and from our backsliding. For now, our salvation, the appearance of our Lord and Saviour in all His glory, is nearer to us than when we first believed. The night, the spiritual darkness, that is covering the present world is almost gone. And the day of His return is near. We are standing on the edge of eternity. Therefore, let us lay aside the deeds of darkness including attitudes and actions which we think we are doing in secret, but are in fact exposed to God, because we cannot hide from His presence. And let us put on the armor of light. Let us put on Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh. We are not to think of ways to arouse, indulge or gratify the desires of the flesh. That is how a person who has a Maranatha mindset behaves. Wilhelm Ganahl wrote. Christ has told us he will come, but not when, so that we might never take off our armor, or put out our candles. Since he may come any day, it is well to be ready every day. Precisely because we cannot predict the moment, we must be ready at all moments. Enjoy the good things life has to offer. But anticipate heaven by living with a Maranatha mindset continually looking for the blessed hope, which is the appearance of the glory of our great God and Saviour Jesus Christ. If we are looking for Christ to return at any time, we will have this uplook outlook which is a powerful incentive to encourage us to fight the good fight of faith, and live godly lives as well as boldly proclaiming the gospel. Are you living with a Maranatha mindset? Do your day-to-day -day choices reflect the reality of someone who has an expectant attitude? The certainty of the second coming of Christ should touch and color every part of our daily behavior. Ryle notes that, the uncertainty about the date of the Lord's return 
is calculated to keep believers in an attitude of constant expectation and to preserve them from despondency. The story is told of a tourist who visited an exquisite garden on a lovely estate and spoke to the caretaker. How long have you been here? He asked. Twenty-five years. And how often has the owner been to see the estate? Four times. When did he come last? Twelve years ago. Who comes then to look after things? I am left pretty much alone. Yet you keep the garden so spick and span that one would think you were expecting the owner tomorrow. Today, sir, today. Replied the caretaker. Perhaps today? That should be our attitude, every day, every moment. It is not easy to keep your focus on the coming of Christ, especially when we do not know when he is coming. Our flesh, the devil, and the world bring along several distractions. Aimed at taking our minds of Christ, and unto some temporal enjoyments. Our flesh would be craving for meat, and glory, and comfort. The devil will be seeking to get us to disobey God by doubting the his word. The world would offer us all its temporal glory for our satisfaction in this world, but nothing for the world to come. But for a believer, with a Maranatha mindset. As this world grows darker, the promised return of the sun grows brighter. We continue to occupy till he comes because we are looking. Not at things that are seen, but the things that are not seen. Remembering that the things that are seen are temporal, while the things unseen are eternal. So we encourage ourselves with the words of Paul. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. In the future, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. The British expositor G. Campbell Morgan had such a mindset. He wrote I never begin my work in the morning without thinking that perhaps he may interrupt my work and begin his own. I am not looking for death, I am looking for him. In the 1940s, Samuel Beckett wrote a play called Waiting for Godot. The whole play centered on two men. Two men stand on an empty stage, hands in their pockets, staring at each other. All they do is stand and stare. There is no action, no plot, they just stand there waiting for Godot to come. But who is Godot? Is he a person? Does he represent God? Someone has suggested that Godot stands for the pipe dreams that a lot of people hang on to as an escape. As the play ends, those men are still standing on the stage doing nothing, just waiting. Waiting for Godot is a parable of many people's lives empty and meaningless, a pointless matter of waiting. And if there's no God of love, grace and wisdom, then life really is a hopeless waiting for empty time to pass. How totally different, though, is the Christian hope. We're waiting and looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. That hope sustains us, a hope that beyond this world lies a life of indescribable blessing. It is this hope that emboldens us to resist the devil every single day. It is this hope which moves us to put away all filthiness from our lives. It is this hope that moves us to live upright and godly lives in a perverse world. It is this hope that pushes us to our knees every day to pray for unbelievers. It is this hope that moves us to live at peace with men to the extent possible. When the Lord Jesus Christ appears in the air, he is going to welcome home every saint. For at that time he shall come to take us home to heaven. Our entrance into heaven is solely on the basis of our faith in his shed blood and death on the cross and every believer shall receive the same welcome home. But, how many of us will receive his well done, and the crown of righteousness? Be ready for the last moment by being ready at every moment. Maranatha?